Good afternoon. My name is Father John Ensler. I am the president and CEO of Catholic Charities here in the Washington area. This is a homily I gave at the Basilica of the National Shrine last year during Respect to Life Month in 2017. I've been asked to tape it today so those who might be able to use it in their parishes, in their adult education program, in trying to lift up this issue of family peace could do so. So I'm happy to share with you today these thoughts and what I think are important thoughts to make as we celebrate Respect Life, think about one particular issue, which is domestic violence or family peace. So this is Respect Life Month. It's a very important month in the church. We've been doing this now for probably 25 years. Every October we stop and think about various issues of life, life protected from conception to natural death. The reality is, is I think when I say respect for life, you hear different words. I didn't say it, but you might hear abortion because the church has been talking about abortion ever since 1973. It's a big issue for us. We worry about the life of a baby in a womb and the protection of that baby is important to us. So Catholics, Christians, most of us think that life should be protected in the womb. Some think about capital punishment. Did you know that just a couple weeks ago, Pope Francis declared that capital punishment is no longer admissible in the church. He did something rather drastic. He changed the catechism that John Paul II had approved and said, what it said there, it, it's very rare we should use capital punishment. Pope Francis said it should be inadmissible. That will not always be well received, but it's now the teacher of the church to pay attention to it. Some people worry about assisted suicide in our own nation's capital. Here, it's now, if you will, the law of the land. People can take the life of a neighbor, a relative, or a friend if that person chooses to do so. That's a whole different thing. So we would say that life should be protected from conception to natural death. The reality is, is that that's a big struggle for us. We at Catholic Charities say human life always has dignity. It always has dignity. It should be protected no matter what, with the dignity every life deserves. When I spend time in orientation with our new employees, talk about those people we meet in our programs, those people who are on our streets, some of them have some real difficulties. The people who sometimes may be struggling with um, addictions or um, mental health, behavioral health. And so the behaviors are sometimes hard to accept, but I ask all of our employees to do their best to respect each person with the dignity they deserve. Now, one issue we often don't talk about, and one issue that's certainly part of respect for life, is the issue of family peace. Family peace, what does that mean? It means, frankly, we need to root out any domestic violence that occurs in our community, in our congregations, in our neighborhoods. And it's a problem. So today I want to do four things if I can. It won't be long, I promise. But four things. I want to talk about some statistics to get your attention. I think you might be kind of shocked. I want to talk about what the bishops have said, bishops' conference, as well as what Cardinal World said about this issue. I want to talk about some of the myths, the things we've come to believe that maybe aren't exactly true. I'm going to ask you to do something. It should be part of the effort to make a difference to this issue in the future. So first of all, some stats, some statistics, try to get your attention. How about this? The FBI says that every 15 seconds, a woman in this country is abused and beaten. That one out of three or four women, either 25 or 30%, is battered in her lifetime in this country. Department of Justice said that. In Sunday religious services, at least one quarter of the women experience physical, domestic violence, and, and other forms as well. During Vietnam, this is one that always shocks me. In the Vietnam War, which I lived through, many of you lived through, 57,000 soldiers died. In the same period of time, 53,000 women were murdered in this country by their spouse or domestic partner. It's almost equal those who died in Vietnam and those who died in their homes and their neighborhoods, and yet we don't have any concept of how difficult domestic violence is across our nation. 32,000 people 
made violence-related calls this past year at the Metropolitan Police Department because of domestic abuse. 33,000 people. Approximately one call every 16 minutes. Represents an increase of a, nearly 1,000 people over the year before. One in three women, one in four men, experienced some form of physical violence by an intimate partner. A typical, a typical day, domestic violence hotline receives approximately, one day, 21,000 calls, approximately 15 calls every minute. So we have a problem, don't we? Does it get your attention? It's a big issue we deal with every day. Now, some of you young people dealing with dating and experience with college campus, how's it going there? 43%, 43% of dating college women reported experiencing abusive behaviors from their partner, 43%. One in five women are sexually assaulted during their college tenure, one in five women. 57% of teens know someone who has been physically, sexually, or verbally abused in a dating relationship, 57%. And finally, a 2014 study found 10% of teenage students in dating relationships were coerced into sexual intercourse in the previous year. So those are staggering numbers. They speak of a culture that begins not when people are married, begins even in high school, begins in college, continues. It's just a very sad thing. So hopefully I've got you thinking now about this is our respect for life issue, an issue we ought to deal with and struggle with and try to hopefully help and support as a church the best we can for others. The bishops have spoken on this issue and spoken a lot. Talk to us about what it might mean. So I want to share with you the 1992 statement on domestic violence for the bishops, a couple of statements. First one is this. Domestic violence, it says, is any kind of behavior a person uses to control an intimate partner through fear and intimidation. It includes physical, sexual, psychological, verbal, and economic abuse. Some examples of domestic abuse include battering, name calling, and insults, threats to kill or harm one's partner or children, destruction of property, marital rape, and forced sterilization or abortion. All those situations the bishops mentioned as concerns for them trying to deal with domestic violence and family peace. What's the Catholic Church teach? This comes again from the document in 1992. Catholic the church teaches that violence is another person in any form fails to treat that person as someone worthy of love. Instead, it treats the person as an object to be used. When violence occurs in a sacramental marriage, the abused spouse may question, how do these violent acts relate to my promise to take my spouse for better or worse? The person being assaulted needs to know that acting and the abuse does not violate the marriage promises. While violence can be directed towards men, it tends to harm women and children more. In 2014, Cardinal Wuerl produced a blog during October, Respect Life Month, about domestic violence. Here's what he said. If either of the spouses causes grave mental or physical danger to the other spouse or to the offspring or otherwise renders common life to, it, to, to the other legitimate cause for leaving, either by decree or local ordinary, even on his own, on her own authority, there's a danger and delay. In other words, the spouse is abusive to another spouse, the children, the stay near is the danger of harm, encouraged to take care of themselves. What's being said there? This is one of the myths. One of the myths is that if you're married in a sacramental marriage as a Catholic, you should stay no matter what. In fact, I would share with you that most of the young priests who are ordained come out with that attitude from the seminary. That's what they're taught. I understand it. But here Cardinal World is saying, and the church is saying, that if someone is putting you into danger and you are in harm's way, you have a right to leave, a right to find safety, a right to look for another way to experience the goodness of life without that spouse at your side. That's a pretty strong statement, but it is a statement that means you have a right to protect yourself, take care of you, and your children, and your family. Cardinal World clearly is on board with realizing one of the myths we deal with 
is that you should never leave a marriage no matter what might happen, how your spouse might act. Another myth is that we believe, I think all of us kind of believe, this is a problem far away. On any given Sunday, there might be one out of four women in your congregation, in this congregation, who have been battered or abused. Imagine that. So when a priest gets up and speaks about this issue, he is speaking about what at least one out of four women in that church may have experienced. Maybe not that last week, but maybe during high school or college, or more recently, that's a struggle. We dare not forget it. So where I live in Bethesda, a couple weeks ago, I dealt with a family who came to me. It was a woman whose husband was abusive. How was he abusive? We had already hit her a number of times. When he threatened to leave, he went out and slashed her tires so she couldn't leave. Took all of her credit cards so she could, had no economic sources of, of, of finance and just left her in the house by herself. He left for a while. There she was all by herself. Thank God she had some women friends who helped out. Thank God she had a church like ours who tried to help. But there's a situation of domestic abuse taking place in Bethesda where I live. Remember a year ago or so, a woman up the street in Potomac talked about how she came home. Her husband was so angry with her, he locked her out of the house. And here she is, imagine, at the door of her house trying to get in. Her husband would not let her in. She's locked out with her son, by the way, with her as well. So there are a lot of myths about this particular problem. It happens throughout our diocese. It happens throughout our community. It happens throughout our city. It happens to lots of people you might at least expect. It's a concern we have. It's a respect life issue. So finally, what can you do? First of all, be aware of the fact this particular issue does exist in every church, in every neighborhood, in every community. This issue does exist. And we have an obligation to be open to listening. So priests and counselors and secretaries in church offices, those with education, Understand that, in fact, when someone comes and says, I've got a problem, the problem may be much more serious than you could, you could imagine. We don't expect or really want you to try to deal with that problem yourself. So once you be aware of the problems, you can go to proper authorities, go to, if you will, Catholic charities or domestic violence hotlines, go to a place where people who've got knowledge and got experience and have dealt with this in the past can help you deal through this issue. It's not an easy issue. If someone is violent, if someone is dealing with violence themselves, to be careful we don't set off that violence against someone because the advice we gave without the proper understanding, proper knowledge of how to handle that. We should pray as a church for those women, and in some cases men, who find themselves in abusive situations. We should pray for them and ask in a special way that God would watch over those who might find themselves caught. And I use the word purposely, caught, a web of hurt, violence, and abuse in their own home. Please, God, in respect for life month, we can raise this issue up so that those who deal with these individuals, both the perpetrator and the abuse, can find in their church, in their community, people who care, people who listen, maybe people who can make a difference. May we pray for those in need and ask the Lord to help us find a way to reach out and take care of those who come to us in need and ask for one thing, our open ear, our care, our concern. May God bless you as you continue to find ways to respect the gift of life, protect the dignity of every human person, particularly those in our parishes and communities who need our help.